Hello everyone, my name is Jason, a current year one medical student at Hong Kong U, passionate in tech and productivity. Today I'm going to give you a tour around what's on my iPhone, in particular the model is the new iPhone 14 Pro. I'm going to show you what's on the phone and also what's in the phone in terms of the case of my phone as well as the apps and all the tools I use for studying, for productivity and a day to day life just to make my life easier and what are some hacks and apps that are definitely worth downloading for your phone. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So let's talk about what's on my iPhone 14 Pro. So this is the iPhone 14 Pro, the standard model, and I just prefer using the smaller models just for one hand usage where I can reach all parts of the phone with one part of my hand. Choosing a case is a really tough choice for me. There's lots and lots of case options between Apple cases, and other manufacturers out there. But in the end, I ended up using a customized case to fire case with my custom initials on it. I picked the purple colorway because I did get a purple iPhone and thought, might as well remind myself that I have a purple iPhone. And so I got the purple colorway with a custom JC text printed on top of it. I did get this in store in Hong Kong with the case to fire store. Overall, no complaints, it's very sturdy. A little bit overpriced for the brand. It looks awesome. I'm very comfortable with it and I don't really take off my case now ever. On the screen protector, I do have a complimentary case to fire screen protectors. And what's cool about this is just it's really minimal. They do have a little bit of branding on the uh, bottom right and bottom left edges with the case to fire logo. It does get out of the way when you look at it. Uh, it's only when you zoom in with some lighting, you can see the logo and some branding and overall. Now that I look at it, it looks pretty cool. But yeah, uh, it totally gets out of the way when you're using the phone. So the screen protector and the case combo really, really protects my phone perfectly. So I don't need to get Apple Care Plus or any other insurance plans when I do drop my phone because I, I do, I am quite a clumsy person and I drop my phone quite a lot of times. So having been using this for a couple months now, it's still in a really good condition. Although I did need to replace my screen protector once. So this is my second case to fire screen protector. But overall, the phone itself in perfect condition. Hopefully it does last that for uh, as long as possible. In terms of what's in my phone, so on my lock screen setup, I have this really beautiful minimal wallpaper, which I use for both of my home screen and lock screen with the iOS 16 blurred uh, home screen lock screen combo. I have the blurred setup for my home screen and the non blurred wallpaper for my lock screen. With iOS 16, you have a lot, a lot of different options for your lock screen customization and I did play around with it and I decided to go with this standard really clean minimal font. They do have a lot of font options in terms of the iOS 16s and all the widgets and all the complications and uh, the minimal clean clock and the calendar works perfect for me. For my widgets, I have a calendar widget. I have a physiological practical at Lecture Hall Theater 3 and I could just easily glance at that information really easily so I don't miss any classes, lectures, as well as any events I have coming up with people or social gatherings. So it's really, really cool to have my calendar at a glance. I also have been tracking my food with my fitness pal for a year or two now. And so I have this my fitness pal widget here as well to see my calories goal of 3079 per day. I'm trying to bulk up and gain weight. It's actually quite hard for me to reach that goal. And that's a lot, a lot of food. It's not only a shortcut, but it's also a glanceable information to see what my progress is along the day. I could click on it and then I could just press on the app for a scan a barcode or scan a meal to track my food and calories and micronutrients and micronutrients. And to the right, of course, as a medical student, I have an Anki shortcut, which directly takes me to the Anki app for my daily flashcards. If you don't know what Anki is, it's a powerful, powerful flashcard app to memorize a bunch of information required for medical school. So I have currently a lot, a lot of uh, decks for each lecture slide within the system that we're studying, the cardiopulmonary and renal system. So basically I just go through these flashcards 
and uh, if I get them wrong, I press again. If I don't get them good, I press good. And every day I have to review these flashcards and it uses the concept of active recall and space repetition to ensure that I have these knowledge in my long-term memory for those upcoming exams. And uh, it's it's been really, really good in the subway or in queues in the city when I'm queuing up and have these empty spaces of time. It's been really useful instead of scrolling on social media. I have this little shortcut to remind myself. So now let's get to the home screen setup and I'm quite proud of this setup. It's been changing weekly and daily and this is the recent change. This home screen setup is no means static. I've been changing it every single day in terms of the application choices, the widgets and the placement of the apps to basically environmentally design my phone to be a productivity master house and less of a distraction machine. At my home screen, the wallpaper is the same sunset wallpaper. I have my lock screen, but blurred. This uses the iOS 16 function, so I don't have to use a blurring app or something. The main show is definitely the widget that I have, and this is from an app called Widgy. Now, Widgy is really, really an awesome app, and I got this widget actually from Widgy library for free. So it's a free widget app, which has a big community creation where everyone can customize and make their own widgets to absolutely every single style, every widget type, size. This it could include live information such as calendars, dates, the weather, batteries, and even system information like CPU usage. And basically I found this really, really cool widget in the widget library and I sort of customized it a little bit and I used the transparent feature so that actually blends with the background really really well. I highly recommend widget you can not only make your own widgets but also make some community widgets on there. So on this widget I could see my battery level, weather, big date as well as my calendar as well so this is a really cool view for my calendar where i could see my upcoming events also a cute little quote write it on your heart that every day is the best day in the year really cute quote as for the applications i keep my apps in two rows for my first screen in the bottom so it's easily accessible with my thumb so i could just reach there instead of reaching all the way up so again just reduces friction for me to use the app of course i could always just pull down and use a search for any apps that are not in my home screen. The first app I have is called Feedly. Feedly is just a RSS feeder, which allows me to read and curate articles from the websites that I follow. Uh, I don't really follow much. Some Ali Abdal, Forte Labs, reviews by Key Productive, Thomas Frank for productivity. Apple Notes, by far the best notes app I've actually used. I've tried a lot, a lot of apps. Uh, Bear, Evernote, OneNote. I always come back to Apple Note just because of the easeability of it. So if for any quick ideas I have, the quick note taking system is awesome. It's the first funnel when I have an idea in my head and I really want to jot it down. I could easily just click into the app and just select a new note or even better by using the widget in the control center with a quick note. I could just easily launch into a quick note and jot down my idea, good ideas especially business ideas, content ideas, come and buy really quickly and you'll lose them if you don't record them immediately. So uh, I love and love the absolute frictionless experience of jotting down notes. Overall, it's just a really first way into my system. A uh, long database form of notes remains to be Notion, which I'll talk about more later, but it's really just the first thing. It's a quick note system and Apple Notes is definitely the best at doing the job of that. Of course, I've got settings, which I don't have to talk about. Uh, one password is my password manager of choice. I've been using this for uh, for years now. Uh, I've actually unsubscribed for a little bit or to save money to use and try to use iCloud Keychain, but it's a nightmare to use and it doesn't have a dedicated app, but one password does. So I came back to it, decided to subscribe to it and found it completely worth it. It takes my stress off of password managing, especially in this digital age. And 1Password has really, really cool features because on its Mac and iPhone apps, you've got, for example, Watchtower to see how great your password strengths are and uh, the search features and the filter features as well as the different types of information that you can put in not only with passwords, but you can also put in, for example, secure notes, identities, API credentials, bank accounts, and other sort of secure information that you want to store within one password. The Chrome extension is also awesome. And overall, it's just really easy to create and also 
use the passwords when you're in logging into a website on Safari or Chrome on the Mac. Camera, nothing much about it. The iPhone camera is really, really good. So I really want to capture more content, memories, and photos and videos on the iPhone. So I just quick access to the camera. Outlook is the email app that our university uses. I absolutely get spammed every day in terms of uh, newsletters and everything what that's going on in the in my university I, I barely read them now uh, but yeah uh, day to day I clear these in emails because some important emails do come through here audible is my absolute one of my favorite apps on my phone it's, it's my basically my main way of consumption of content now uh, besides YouTube for video content but yeah I found myself I don't have that much time to read now because I do need to dedicate more time to studying and other side interests I'm pursuing and my absolute favorite way now to read a book is through audio I can listen to it 1.5 times and I actually find myself re retaining the information that I've learned from these non-fiction audiobooks better when I listen to it so I'm absolutely in love with audible currently I am listening to atomic habits on the audiobooks as well as make time and the millionaire fast lane I've also got other audiobooks purchased here which I'm going to listen to in the future strong is another one of my favorite apps it's a workout tracking app and my one of my new 2023 new year resolution is to work out at least four times a week and strong allows me to keep track of that really easily and it keeps track of when in a workout what my sets my reps and what my weights are and uh, it just allows me to progressively overload really really easily and it's just a really intuitive simple to use workout tracker in the gym because it's got a plethora of features such as when you're starting to work out you could, for example, have notes, see what's going on, what set a focus metric, set your bar type, a rest timer, weight unit, everything. And also when you're doing a particular exercise, for example, you could see what your weight was previously and try to obviously either increase the weight or the reps this time for progressively overload. Now in my doc, uh, I have keep three of my most important apps. The first app I have is my to favorite to-do list app called things now i have this big 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 conundrum with to-do list apps because i've been trying so many to-do list apps as a productivity guru i've swapped between so many to-do list apps so the other to-do list app that i've uh, used for quite a little bit is actually sorted now sorted is a really similar app to things but it allows you to actually hyper schedule a task for example if i want to do something like uh, write a blog post I could uh, put that in and then press auto schedule it will dedicate a certain time in that day to do that task I really really like this idea of the hyper scheduling however I feel like sometimes it does fix my life too much in which I'm doing that particular task I've got not much freedom so instead I prefer leaving to task to things free management system so I could for example see what tasks I have to do today and just check them off when I'm done any time of the day and I really like the projects uh, area of things because it allows you to actually see upcoming assignments or projects really easily at a glance and allows you to dedicate and put in subtasks within the task so you could have short actionable tasks towards a particular goal or a project which is really really useful and things free again uses the gtd getting things done framework in which there's an inbox to jot down all the tasks that you have in your mind and just brain dump into the app and then you could obviously schedule them later on into today or upcoming views or in certain areas of your life and projects within these areas anki which i said before the flashcard app as well as safari for web browsing now i've also got the second page of the home screen and i have this awesome habit tracking app that i've been getting into called fabulous and they have this awesome awesome little widget they have on the home screen and i found it really really cool so fabulous is actually sort of a glorified like life coaching app with habit tracking in it basically have these journeys that you can join in the app and currently i'm on the first one in an unexpected journey 
but uh, later on uh, you have these these different types of journeys to basically change your life and basically tracking these habits into routines so i've got uh, you can select for example healthy eating uh, deepening your focus starting a habit exercise habit mental fitness addiction uh the art of stoic living and a purpose-driven life and all these journeys within the app intermediate fasting total tidy up breaking your phone addiction all these journeys in the app basically break them into these small habits the idea of the atomic habits and uh, building them into routines and i really really love this habit tracker trying to make this a little bit more consistent with my morning routine so far i've got drinking water and stretching for uh, my posture correction eating a great exercise eating a great breakfast exercising celebrating afternoon routine logging my food as well as my evening routine i've got tidying up and writing in my journal the journal app of my choice is day one it has these obviously these views for your streaks to keep you motivated and a golden triangle which shows if all three of your routines your morning afternoon and evening routines are completed and uh yeah so it has these awesome cute little animations and motivations every time i complete the routine and uh, these daily coaching, there's a lot, a lot of features built into it. It is a subscription-based life coaching app, but I find this uh, quite, quite motivational and revolutionary in terms of my life habits, so I found it quite worth it for me. Another app I have is called Off Screen, which is basically uh, screen time, but it's also a separate app with more statistics to it. So, for example, I could see how much I'm uh, on my screen while walking, stationary, uh, the amount of pickups that I have. One thing that I found really, really cool is that I could have these focus timers where I could, for example, count up or count down when I'm deciding I want to study or if I want to work on a project. And I could select what to focus and start to focus and it'll count up and all these statistics I could view back and see how much time that I've spent studying and working for my upcoming exam and also you, I could also block out apps with iOS 16 I could block out apps whilst I'm in the focus mode uh, using this app so I physically could not open apps like for example Instagram while I'm, I'm starting to focus this is especially useful for the countdown feature which basically blocks out apps for a certain amount of time day one my favorite journal app i've been journaling since 2015 using day one so i've been a long-term user i've not been particularly consistent but however this year for 2023 i really want to start daily journaling so that's why i have that habit in my evening routine in um, fabulous and of course i have whatsapp and whatsapp is just my it's the messaging app in terms of other apps that are present on my phone so in my widget view i have my calendar and my fitness pal the strong widget to show how many workouts i've done in a week and of course notion notion is awesome on the phone as well this page here is a shortcut to my video ideas and tracking my video widgets but i have my main page is called life os and it allows me to track my goals for fitness and um, health youtube entrepreneurship self-development and obviously life in medical school and studying and here uh, this app is actually life-changing for me it's called one sec now one sec uh, has saved me let's see here 44 hours overall 44 hours and saved me 189 attempts per week of launching Instagram and YouTube on my phone. When I go on either Instagram or YouTube on my phone, I notice I just mindlessly scroll or procrastinate. That time could be better off either creating content, studying, or reading, or doing something else. Premise is, if, if I'm trying to launch Instagram, for example, it basically has this really friction screen where I have to wait for 10 seconds, take a deep breath, and then it allows me to launch Instagram. It shows in a big number my attempts to open Instagram within the 24 hours, as well as my alternatives that I could do. For example, I could open Anki. I could press, I don't want to open Instagram or I continue to Instagram. So I could press, for example, open Anki instead, which is a better off use of my time than just launching on Instagram. So it saved me so much of my time. And one sec is one of my favorite apps here on my phone just to cure that social media addiction which so many 
people have nowadays in the modern era. Sleep Cycle, which is my app of choice for sleep tracking and keeping track of my sleep quality occasionally. It's hard to be squeezing in time for sleep, unfortunately for me, because of so much things going on. But yeah, I do have, I do consciously think that I do need to sleep more. As for my socials, the classic socials got Be Real, Instagram, Snapchat, WhatsApp, LinkedIn, Facebook, all the classic social media apps, which I use less and less because of one sec. And yeah, that's pretty much it of my what's on my iPhone setup. I hope you really, really enjoyed it and inspired you to get some of these apps or just reorganize your home screen a little bit just for productivity and digital minimalism. Click here if you're interested in my life as a medical student in Hong Kong, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Hasta luego.